Good morning and welcome. This is the launch of the WJC Caribbean Sustainable Cities Conference 2020, coming to you live from the University of the West Indies, Mona, Western Jamaica campus here at 10 Queens Drive, Montego Bay, and with linkages from across various locations across the cities of Kingston and Montego Bay. This is another of our virtual media experience, which in a sense has become par for the course as we all learn to navigate life with COVID-19. I am Dr. Patrick Prendergast, director of the UEMONA Western Jamaica campus and chairperson of the conference planning committee. And I will certainly, I have the pleasure of guiding you through this morning's exciting program. I want to thank you all for joining us. We are indeed grateful that you are sharing this experience with us, especially those from the media, your journalists, reporters, videographers, bloggers, vloggers, social media influencers. We really appreciate your joining us this morning and thank you. I know that the team and a few of our partners are excited about fielding your questions at the end of our presentations. But I just want to pause for a moment to invoke the presence of the Almighty on our proceedings. Almighty giver of life and servant of grace, we give thee praise for all the wonderful things you have done for us. We raise up the cities and communities of our region and the peoples of our region to you. We lift up the organizers and supporters of this event and ask that you grant us wisdom, patience, understanding, and a reflexive mindset as we explore solutions to our many challenges across our country, Jamaica, and the wider Caribbean region. We affirm your almighty power and acknowledge that it is through your grace and mercies that we walk in your light and ask that you continue to bless us with the courage to stand up for justice, brotherhood, and peace in our towns and villages, our communities, and our cities in all our nations. May we be bold in shining our light so that others may follow. We give thee thanks, we give thee praise, and we affirm you for care and guide now and forevermore. Amen. This morning, we will hear from members of the conference planning committee, including Mrs. Doreen Prendergast, section chair for environmental sustainability, and Ms. Sashina Rowe, sales manager at our partner hotel, the Hilton Rosal Resort and Spa. I also want to acknowledge leaders of the city of Montego Bay, Mr. Gerald Lee, Chief Executive Officer of the St. James Municipal Corporation, and Ms. Janet Silvera, President of the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We extend special recognition to Mr. Evan Caetano, Senior Specialist for Water and Sanitation in the Inter-American Development Bank Country Office, Jamaica, and to note that the IDB is our lead partner for this conference. Acknowledging also Mr. Bar Mark Barnett, President of the National Water Commission and representing our sponsor organizations. And I will say among our sponsor group, we also welcome Mr. Ricardo Monroe of the Development Bank of Jamaica and other members of our sponsor and partner organizations. In my introduction on the homepage of our really beautiful and user-friendly conference website, www.wjcsustainablecities.org, I note that the Caribbean Sustainable Cities Conference 2020 is a significant endeavor, not just for the campus as an academic institution, but for the Caribbean, which has its own unique set of vulnerabilities. It is also of note that the Caribbean has its own special brand of resilience 
as a group of small island developing states. And that too should be recognized in the discussion about sustainability. These vulnerabilities to international shocks, be they economic fallout, natural disasters, public health pandemics, all these coupled with our deeply rooted spirit of resilience and overcoming have provided us with many critical lessons, not just for ourselves, but for the entire world. We must as an institution and as a people continue to share those lessons with all those who will benefit from our experience. Our cities are among the fastest growing economic and social enterprises requiring new levels of thinking and application towards public health and safety, crime control, traffic congestion, water and wastewater management, and coastal management. It requires new and innovative models and approaches needed to, be, to, be, to, 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 to enhance this process of building out a technological architecture that keeps our cities, our communities, and our peoples in line and at pace with the global trend towards smart, safe, and communicative cities. What better time than now for us to critically reflect on where we are in meeting the UN development, Sustainable Development Goal of Sustainable Cities and Communities, SDG 11, and to examine specifically the nexus between ensuring good health and well-being, climate action, protecting our terrestrial ecosystems and realizing peaceful and inclusive societies as the region responds to the smart city designations. You know, our principal, Professor Dale Weber, is always reminding us that UE Mona has a strong reputation of being responsive and responsible to the needs and aspirations of our region. Our university is ever agile in its service and leadership of Caribbean development. And that is what the Caribbean Sustainable Cities Conference 2020 is about, demonstrating that we at UEMONA Western Jamaica campus find value in advancing with our publics this critical dialogue that must be had around issues of sustainability, but also to demonstrate our own agility and, responsible, and responsibility to the peoples of our cities and communities. I think I've talked too much, and so I'm going to have somebody else tell us a little bit more about our conference. To do the conference overview, um, please welcome Mrs. Doreen Prendergast. She's a member of the Conference Planning Committee with responsibility for environmental sustainability. Over to you, Mrs. Prendergast. Thank you, Mr. Master of Ceremonies, Dr. Patrick Prendergast. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning to all those who have joined us on Zoom and YouTube. Just to give you a little context to the conference. The University of the Western is Mona Western Jamaica campus will be hosting the first Caribbean Sustainable Cities Conference 2020. And this will be held from November 4 to 6 at the Hilton Rosal Resort and Spa, Montego Bay, Jamaica. As you may be aware, the world is becoming increasingly urbanized. And according to data coming out of the United Nations, since 2007, more than half the world's population has been living in cities. And that share is projected to rise to 60% by 2030. Cities are thus engines of economic growth. And this position is supported by many writers on urban development. And I just to quote one of them, Musiwa Shava, he quote, he states, Cities can be drivers of economic growth and means to combat poverty and strengthen social cohesion, end of quote. This can only be successfully done though by shaping the urban agenda to make sustainable urbanization a priority. Here we are talking about making cities green, intelligent and sufficiently attractive to dissuade brain drain and to encourage a sense of belonging. The conference therefore seeks to explore and expand the critical discussion taking place in the global space about issues related to sustainability of cities, especially in small island developing states as Dr. Prendigas mentioned earlier. The conference will bring together major stakeholders and players 
involved in important activities related to achieving the targets of the Sustainable Development Goal 11, Sustainable Cities and Communities. The objective is to critically reflect on where we are in attaining that goal and to examine the nexus between climate action, which is set out in Sustainable Development Goal 13, protecting our terrestrial ecosystem, as is set out in Sustainable Development Goal 15, and realizing peaceful and inclusive societies that are responsive to the needs and aspirations of its people that is set out in Sustainable Development Goal 16. Of course, a conference of this nature could not be held without incorporating the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. According to statistics coming out of the United Nations, and I'll just quote and, and uh, 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 take a quotation from their webpage, it states, Cities are on the front line of coping with the pandemic and its lasting impacts. Across the globe, COVID-19 is threatening cities and communities, endangering not only public health, but also the economy and the fabric of society." End of quote. Now, to look at the thematic areas and to point it to the thematic areas, the three main thematic areas of the conference are captured in the subtitle, Go Green, go safe, go smart. And if you have gone onto the very beautiful website that has been set up for the conference, you would have seen that all over. Now in terms of delving down a little deeper into the thematic areas, the first major theme is environmental sustainability and climate action in the Caribbean. And that theme seeks to explore things to do with the climate agenda across the Caribbean, planning urban development and climate adaptation for waterfront cities, sustainable tourism, resilience, and community inclusivity, water and wastewater management in coastal towns. The second thematic area pertains to safety, security, peace, and inclusivity in the Caribbean. And this speaks about our socio-political and cultural elements as, it pertain, as they pertain to crime in the region, promoting peaceful and inclusive communities. And of course, we could not leave out our women and children. So there's a theme about abuse and violence against women and, and children, freedom of movement, democracy and inclusiveness, freedom of expression, crime and the projection of prosperity, the rule of law and access to justice, citizen security and community policing. The third and final thematic area is technological transformation and Caribbean cities as digital platforms. And we explore technology and issues of public interest, private rights and trust, big data, thick data, digitization and innovation in city planning, camera technology and the management of city life, smart city potential in the Caribbean, and access to information and improving governance processes. Now, to the event, day one of the event will be held on Wednesday, November 4, 2020. And this day we'll see us having some special workshops for high schools, colleges and universities, as well as a public forum. The themes for the workshops are one, environmental potentials over land and under sea, and two, everything digital, COVID-19 and the shift to virtual life. As for the public forum, that will be held at 2 p.m. on November 4, and the theme for that public forum is lessons from COVID-19, and that will be streamed live. For in the afternoon of that said day, November 4, there will be an opening ceremony. And this opening ceremony will commence at 7 p.m. at the Hilton Rose Hall Resort and Spa. The guest speaker for this opening ceremony is His Excellency Asif Hamad, the British High Commissioner to Jamaica. For day two and day three, the dates are November 5 and Thursday, November 5 and Friday, November 6, 2020. We'll be having discussions around the theme that I just outlined. And 
we'll have keynote, a keynote speak. We'll have keynote speakers, presenters, facilitators, researchers, and we'll have plenaries, panel discussions, and concurrent and consecutive sessions led by local, regional, and international researchers. Who can attend this conference? The conference is open to planners, environmentalists, academics, researchers, policy makers, students, and all other persons and organizations that are interested in sustainable development, particularly the sustainable development of cities. The partners for the conference are international, regional, and local, and local from various organizations universities, development bank, the corporate sector, financial entities, statutory bodies and organizations, municipalities and the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and the media. So in concluding, I could say easily, there you have it. Yui Mona, WJC is staying true to his commitment to take the gown to the town. In its hosting of this Caribbean Sustainable Cities Conference 2020 from November 4 to 6, 2020 at the Hilton Rosal Resort and Spa, Montego Bay, Jamaica. All COVID proof and ready. See you there. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Prendergast. Um, COVID free, COVID safe. Uh, actually, that provides a transition for our, our next presenter. You know, many persons have been expressing their own delight and excitement about having this conference and they're seeking out information about registration, how to submit papers and all of that. But of course, they will always ask that question, what will happen and I think COVID still a keep. Well, we are very, very <laughs> cognizant of that. And we have taken the position to support the approach that says, let the protocols work. Because we know that this is probably the best way to test what is happening. And of course, to also demonstrate our level of responsibility to our publics. We have therefore on our website, put up a priority safe statement and when you go to our website, you will see that, but it expresses the fact that we're delighted to work with a, a, a hotel partner that does have a, a stay safe policy. And so we're going to ask um, Mr. Sheena Rowe, Senior Sales Manager at Hilton Rosal Resort and Spa here in the city of Montego Bay to speak to that statement now. Over to you, Ms. Rowe. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So as you know, and as you said earlier, we are COVID-19 ready for you. And what that means is that we are ready to host your function, ready to host you to stay here. And with all our policies in place, I've told my guests, I feel very safe at work. Now, before I go into the guest itself, I want you to remember that we at the Hilton take pride in what we do. Our staff and the health of our staff is also very important. So by protecting you and protecting ourselves, it works hand in hand. Now, when the staff comes here, first of all, because it's not immune to the staff, staff can have COVID-19 too. So once they come to the resort, they are first checked upon entry. They are screened by the security temperature checks, sanitization, math, basically the same thing our guests will go through upon arrival. Now, once you arrive and you have your luggage, the first thing that happens is that your luggage is sanitized. We partner with Lysol, and so everything around here is a Hilton clean stay and a Playa safe stay as well. So luggage is sanitized. Once you enter into our lobby area, your hands are sanitized, your temperature is checked, and you sanitize your feet on a sanitization mat. Now, all around our resort at different areas, you'll see that there are sanitization stations. Now, of course, you're here for a meeting. Are your meeting rooms fully equipped? Yes, they are. I shared earlier a checklist that we go through and there are different touch points in every meeting room and all touch points are sanitized. Each time you leave that room, it's sanitized and it's sealed to say that it's fully disinfected. 
different areas in that room have a sanitization station. Now, while you're here as well, you must eat. All our areas are equipped with staff um, who are completely in their protective equipment and uh, are ready to serve you. Now our buffet is also available, but it's not an assisted buffet. So we spoke about the rooms, we spoke about food, your rooms, your sleeping rooms. When you go to your sleeping rooms, what to expect? Again, we have a checklist that we work with where all touch points in your sleeping rooms are also sanitized. I feel so safe at work. I feel happy being with my guests. I feel happy serving my guests because I know we take necessary precautions to ensure that both sides of the party are equipped and covered and cared for in terms of not spreading COVID-19. We truly want to keep our country open. We truly do not want anything else to happen where you know, there's an outbreak, so we take this our precautions. So you're all set. I say, come on down, enjoy the scenery, enjoy your meeting, and know that you're in a safe environment while doing so. Thank you. <laughs> Hope remains our guiding light. Resilience our battle cry. Stronger is the mission of our audacity. Bolder the promise and the light. Larger are the pillars we have become. Expanding confidence for the turn. Together we rise. Brighter and better. Together we overcome. Thank you so very much. Um, you know, stronger together. We really appreciate our partners and the effort they're uh, taking and making to make sure that we stay true to being resilient, responsible, and safe. You know, the sustainability of every city relies on the effective and efficient leadership and management of its resources. And I will tell you, our city, Montego Bay, has over the years benefited from the leadership of a group of committed individuals and institutions. We've been working closely with the St. James Municipal Corporation and we here now meaning you in Mona Western Jamaica campus, especially through its former mayor, Honorable Homer Davis, now the Minister of State in the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development. Uh, he has really been a true friend of our annual Sustainable Cities Symposium, which we have upscaled to this conference um, since October 2016. And in fact, he has never failed to support it and is still committed to presenting a paper at the conference in November. We also have from the Municipal Corporation, Mr. Trevian Manning, uh, the Director of Planning. He's part of our planning committee. But here this morning to bring greetings on behalf of the St. James Municipal Corporation is its Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Gerald Lee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor for me to join you through this medium uh, to officially add the endorsement of the St. James Municipal Corporation to the Caribbean Sustainable Cities Conference. Go green, go safe, go smart. The city of Montego Bay welcomes the hosting of this November 4 to 6 conference at, at a time when the COVID-19 pandemic continues to impact the day-to-day -day operations of not just Jamaica, but indeed the world. COVID-19 has thrown many challenges our way. However, Oftentimes, challenges present life-changing opportunities, if capitalized on, can make us better off at the end. The St. James Municipal Corporation has been playing its part in efforts to bring sustainability to Montego Bay and to have our wonderful city become the first smart city in the Caribbean. 
under the Emerging and Sustainable City Initiative, for which some $15 million was, has, was being allotted in the 2015-2016 estimate of expenditure, a sustainable action plan has been established for Montego Bay Urban Township. This is aimed at addressing the main environmental issues affecting the long-term sustainability and development of the city. Ladies and gentlemen, it is said that prior preparation prevents poor performance and the St. James Municipal Corporation must be seen as a proactive organization for the work being done, not only to promote the city of Montego as a smart destination, but to ensure that there is continued growth and development in making it green. The installation of a mega LNG plant in Montego Bay Freeport is part of the long-term solution of eliminating some of the carbon footprints of our space through the use of green energies. We continue to encourage the construction of smart homes and the installation of energy saving equipment and devices when building are constructed. The St. James Municipal Corporation looks forward to the wide ranging and high impact discussions which will take place during the conference. And I'm sure that some of the outcomes are, impl are implemented. We will become the place of choice to live, work, do business and raise families. I'm very pleased to know that the conference will also place emphasis on areas such as environmental sustainability, public health, safety and security, as well as technological transformation. Indeed, the world is now in the middle of a fourth industrial revolution and the demand for our citizens to get aboard the technological support highway is now important than ever. This conference will be a game changer, and I know that it, it will expertly, and I know that it will be expertly handled by the University of, University of the West Indies, Western Jamaica campus, which is another shining example of high quality of what happens here in Western Jamaica. Again, I join you all in looking forward to the conference and to advise that the St. James Municipal Corporation stands as a solid organizational support base for this event. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. And I thank you very much, uh, CEO Lee. Um, at another time, I will tell you about uh, a, a different kind of relationship that we actually share from another part of our, of our beautiful country, where he's a friend and an advocate for orderly development of this city. Now we want to turn our attention to hearing from the president of the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Everybody knows of her passion for youth and education, and indeed, indeed her many philanthropic endeavors. But the city, I believe, is privileged at this time to have her serve as the president of one of the strongest and most influential stakeholder groupings around. We welcome Miss Janet Silvera, president of the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thank you. Chair, Dr. Patrick Prendergast. Mrs. Doreen Prendergast, Member Conference Planning Committee. Mr. Sheena Rowe, Senior Sales Manager, Hilltop Resort. Mr. Gerald Lee, CEO, St. James Municipal Corporation. Mr. Evan Cayetano, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Water and Sanitation Senior Specialist, the Inter-American Development Bank, Jamaica. Mr. Mark Barnett, President, National Water Commission. Members of the media, 
ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my pleasure and privilege to bring greetings to you on behalf of the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I am particularly excited because UEWJC is my alma mater in which I am extremely proud. This conference will bring together national and local authorities, key representatives from ac academia, national security, health and environment from across the Caribbean, as well as multilateral organizations on a most timely topic of common interest. That is sustainable development goal SDG 11 sustainable cities and communities with special focus on the environment, crime and national security and technology, as we strive to make our cities in the region green, safe and smart, and yes, peaceful. I am honored that the UEWJC has seen it fit to put forward with this conference, eh? which will be the first of its kind this year, since the onset of the COVID-19 virus in Jamaica, I Okay, I was muted just now. I don't know how that happened. Probably Dr. Patrick Prendergast. However, I just want to continue to congratulate you, Western Jamaica, Western Campus that you have decided to gather so many persons in Montego Bay from November 4 to 6 at Ailton Rosal, because this is particularly appropriate. The city of Montego Bay led by the St. James Municipal Corporation was selected as one of the pilot cities of the Inter-American Development Bank's Emerging and Sustainable Cities Initiative in 2012. The 2015 Sustainable Montego Bay Action Plan which resulted from that selection by the IDB notes that the city, our city, suffers from uncontrolled, low density urban growth, much of which faces natural hazard risk. And that informal settlements across the city, among other things, present safety and sanitization issues. The plan which is being executed by the St. James Municipal Corporation as a consequence, seeks to address these risks to promote resilience through, for example, the, the integral neighborhood upgrading program and pilot downtown housing project plans, which includes physical improvements, including but not limited to home improvements, paved streets, sidewalks, sewage connection, stormwater drainage, street lamps, as well as social improvements, such as training and education programs. It will be great interest to gauge the project, the, the progress of this project so far. The Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and Industry continues sup to support UEWGC and the St. James Municipal Corporation. And we are confident that the reposition of Montego Bay as a city of choice, like Mr. Gerald Lee just said, to live, work, raise families and do business. I have no intention whatsoever of moving away from this city. As the conference called for papers noted, small island developing states where every aspect of life is vulnerable to the shocks of climate change, changes in global health, downturn in international trade and economics, as well as inequities in physical and technological innovations. It is thus imperative that we meet to look at the region's trajectory to assess the impact of these changes and to predict and prepare for what lies ahead. As the Chamber of Commerce endorses this conference in November, we are confident in its success. Again, congratulations. Thank you, thank you so very much, Ms. Silvera.
You see, I did tell you about the, the, the passion and commitment of the leadership of the city, and we've heard from really two committed leaders of the city of Montego Bay. Um, we, we really look forward, Ms. Silvia, to the strengthening of our organizational partnership, as you've mentioned, and as always, being involved in the, you know, in the process of transforming the culture of business in Montego Bay. Uh, after all, we're not only endorsing the campaign to let the protocols work, we're also doing what we know we need to do in staying stronger together. So I'm really very, very, very excited to introduce to you a little bit of a entertainment we, we love to say. Uh, and this comes from one of the most prolific choral, uh, chorals that this region has produced with the kind, and as he says, honored permission of musical director, Mr. Hugh Dose. Here is Nexus. have done this without strong partners and committed sponsors. So at this time, we will have our main remarks to be delivered by Mr. Evan Caetano, Water and Sanitation Senior Specialist with the IDB Country Office, Jamaica. And he will be followed by President of the National Water Commission, Mr. Mark Barnett. Over to you, Mr. Caetano. Sorry, I was on mute. Thank you very much, Mr. Master of Ceremonies and Chairman. I hope you're hearing. Only God knows. Not, we're not, get not hearing you. Hello? Hi. I took my microphone off mute. You should be hearing me now. Are you hearing? I am hearing you. Are you hearing me, Evan? Yes, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. So I'm as hearing. I said, coming out of the entertainment piece, only God knows how we get through every day. 
Good morning, Dr. Patrick Prendergast, Campus Director and Conference Chair. Mrs. Doreen Prendergast of the Conference Planning Committee. Mr. Gerald Lee, Chief Executive Officer, St. James Municipal Corporation. Ms. Sashina Rowe, Sales Manager, Hilton Rose Hall. Ms. Janet Silvera, President, Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Mr. Mark Barnett, President, National Water Commission. Mr. Ricardo Monroe of the Development Bank of Jamaica, members of the media, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the general manager of the Inter-American Development Bank Caribbean Group of Countries, I bring you greetings and best wishes on this Caribbean Sustainable Cities Conference 2020. There are two key words here that describes the conference, sustainable and cities which would be applied to the geographic spaces in the Caribbean. According to Wikipedia, a city is a large human settlement. It can be defined as a permanent and densely settled space or place with administratively defined boundaries whose members work primarily on non-agricultural tasks. Cities generally have extensive systems for housing, transportation, sanitation, utilities, land use, and communication. My Google search of the word sustainable reveals a definition of, quote, able to be maintained at a certain rate or level, unquote. This with respect to economic growth. According to Wikipedia, sustainability is the ability to exist constantly in the 21st century, it refers generally to the capacity of the biosphere and human civilization to coexist. This Wikipedia definition of sustainability is appropriate as it links the biosphere with human civilization. The preamble of Sustainable Development Goal 11, Sustainable Cities and Communities states, more than half of us live in cities by 2050, two thirds of all humanity, that is 6.5 billion people will be urban. Sustainable development cannot be achieved without significantly transforming the way we build and manage our urban spaces. The rapid growth of cities, a result of rising population and increasing migration has led to a boom in mega cities, especially in, develop in the developing world and slums are becoming a more significant feature of urban life. Making cities sustainable means creating career and business opportunities, safe and affordable housing, building resilient societies and economies. It involves investment in public transport, creating green spaces and improving urban planning and management in participatory and inclusive ways. A curious statistics from the SDG 11 is that cities occupy just 3% of the earth's land, but account for 60 to 80% of energy consumption and at least 70% of carbon emissions. The IDB Emerging Sustainable Cities Program states that Latin America and the Caribbean is the most urbanized developing region on the planet, with eight out of 10 people living in cities. Between 1950 and, and 2014, the region urbanized at an unprecedented rate, raising its urban population from 50 to 80%, a figure that is expected to climb to 86% by 2050. Over the past two decades, the region's urban population and economic growth has been increasingly taking place in intermediate sized cities, which are expanding exponentially. The IDB developed the Emerging and Sustainable Cities Program, the ESCP, within the Housing and Urban Development Division of the IDB as a non reimbursable technical assistance program to provide direct support to national and subnational governments in the development and execution of city action plans. 
The ESCP employs a multidisciplinary approach to identify, organize, and prioritize urban interventions to tackle the main roadblocks that prevent the sustainable growth of emerging cities in Latin America and the Caribbean. This transversal approach is based on three pillars, environmental and climate change sustainability, urban sustainability, and fiscal sustainability and governance. The ESCP found that emerging cities in Latin America and the Caribbean need planning processes that are specific and action oriented, capable of bringing about quality of life for citizens in the region. The ESCP's methodology is based on the premise that urban development strategies that are well-planned, integrated and cross-sectoral can ensure improvements in the quality of life for citizens and help materialize a more sustainable, resilient, and inclusive future for emerging cities in the region. The program has been working on strengthening the ESCP's methodology by including topics related to local economic development, competitiveness, and productive employment creation. The proposed methodological adjustment stipulates a new set of 10 topics, 15 subtopics, and 17 indicators. The ESCP's methodology is organized in two stages and has five uh, phases. Stage one begins by executing a rapid diagnostic tool to identify the sustainability challenge, challenges of a city. Afterwards, Topics such as water, air quality, transparency, et cetera, are prioritized through the use of multiple filters, such as environmental, economic, public opinion, and sector specialist expertise to identify issues that pose the greatest challenges in a city's pathway towards sustainability. Finally, an action plan is formulated containing prioritized interventions and a set of strategies for their execution across short, medium, and long terms. Bringing these concepts to life to date, the IDB, through the application of the ESCP methodology, has assisted with the preparation of Sustainable Cities Action Plans for sustainable city, for sustainability, I'm sorry, in seven cities in the Caribbean. These are Port of Spain, Montego Bay, Nassau, Paramaribo, Belize City, Bridgetown, and Georgetown. These action plans include an integrated diagnostic and proposal for multi-sectoral investment projects that are critical to jumpstart urban sustainability and face the challenges posed by climate change. Of note, the action plans for Bridgetown and Georgetown have been drafted, but, but not yet sanctioned by the authorities. In Barbados, the ESC diagnostic findings for the greater Bridgetown area, which were widely shared with the government, helped build the case for an 80 million US dollar sustainable development program policy-based loan that was approved in March of this year and dispersed in April. Reforms related to urban planning, coastal zone management and resilience were big features of this policy matrix for this policy-based law. In Trinidad and Tobago, the emphasis of the Port of Spain ESC action plan on regularization of informal settlements on hillsides uh, in East Port of Spain, Lavantil and Mova, for those of you who would know Port of Spain, as well as the recommendations for investments to stimulate urban revitalization in downtown areas were both features of the new 50 million US dollar investment loan, the Urban Upgrading Revitalization Program that was approved in June of this year. Under the Port of Spain Action Plan uh, was identification, design, and financing of a proposed linear park for the East Dry River in Port of Spain under an IDB flood alleviation loan. This was a good example of something useful that was produced, albeit not implemented, as a result of the ESCP. Another good example of projects emanating from the ESCP is the closed harbor beach park being built right now 
by the UDC in Montego Bay, Jamaica, under the One Bay for All Sustainable Montego Bay Action Plan, as it is called. This project was conceptualized and designed as a result of an analytical participatory process between IDB, the St. James Parish, corporate private sector and civil society under the ESP, ESCP program. And uh, of course, both um, uh, the CEO and, and, and the representative from the Chamber of Commerce mentioned this uh, action plan done under the ESCP. So it is fair to, say, fair to say in concluding that the IDB is pleased with these efforts and we remain committed to assist with comprehensive development of Latin America and the Caribbean region and through the Caribbean country department direct focus on the development of the Caribbean. The ESCP's methodology is proven to be a great tool that can be made available to develop action plans for emerging cities. In addition to this product, the IDB is committed to continuing targeted intervention to address the region's development needs, such as housing, improving efficiency of delivery and access to water supply, improving energy efficiency, transportation, and other infrastructure requires, requirements to meet the goals of the Sustainable Development Goal 11 and all others. We thank you for the invitation for IDB to participate in this conference launch. And again, we wish the conference much success. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Caetano. We too wish you and the IDB uh, all the success. I mean, uh, we really appreciate the support that you have given to the conference and we extend our deepest gratitude to the institution. Um, as you have mentioned, I mean, you play such a critical role in the developmental work being done across Latin America and the Caribbean. And certainly uh, we, we stand behind pushing for the advancement, advanced work from the One Bay for All uh, action plan. Thank you again and all the best. We look forward to hearing from you at the conference as well. Now we turn to Mr. Mark Barnett from the National Water Commission. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, Mr. Master of Ceremonies. Uh, and thank you for inviting the NWC in this very important uh, conference. Let me first of all, however, recognize <coughs> uh, Mrs. Doreen Prendergast, uh, member of the Conference Planning Committee, <clears throat> sorry, Sashina Rowe of the Hilton Rose Hall and Spa, a very famous location that we always keep conferences. Uh, Mr. Gerald Lee, CEO of the St. James Municipal Corporation. My good friend for years, Ms. Janet Silvera, President, MBCCI. Certainly Evan, a very key stakeholder in the water and sanitation sector in Jamaica. Uh, Mr. Monroe from the BB, BBJ, Ricardo. Uh, you are also a very key stakeholder in our effort to complement what has been discussed or what is been discussed here this morning. Uh, other members of the planning committee, uh, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, uh, pleasant good morning, and I bring you warm welcome uh, from the NWC. First of all, let me indicate that it is really a remarkable effort to post and to you know, advance a conference of this nature, considering all the things that are happening globally. And therefore, we can see quite quickly how a conference of this nature is very very timely and important, but more so uh, for the NWC, the question would always be asked, how do we fit in? And you know, immediately I can tell you, from you say sustainability, <clears throat> from you say uh, safe, from you say green, the key or one of the key ingredients in that is water and sanitation. And you know, when you speak of cities, you speak of urbanization and all the amenities that goes with it. And water and sanitation has always 
been one of the usually in Jamaican context, missing ingredient in the planning process of how we do things. And I want to just emphasize that from our perspective, we see great synergies between SDG 11 and SDG 6, which is really the hallmark of NWC's activities right across Jamaica. For us, it is important that we explore how do we ensure in a sustainable way uh, renewable water. And that may be a term that is coming uh, as a surprise to everyone. It doesn't necessarily mean recycled wastewater, but it means water that we may have uh, captured during a rainfall in a sustainable way, utilized for various purposes. How, we do, how do we ensure that we continue to, to do that? The next key issue for us is how do we ensure that our planning process you know, complement the activities within our urban centers? Oftentimes, those, those are missing. And with all that is happening now, COVID plus all the other environmental uh, circumstances, how are we agile as planners in ensuring that we are responsive to the changes? Uh, do we employ significant science in our activities or is it just a responsive approach as we're accustomed uh, in, in making decisions? So for us at NWC, it is a pleasure to be supporting and be a part of this uh, uh, effort. And we consider what we do here as being significant in promoting the activities of the conference uh, and ensure that we can actually, you know, use lessons learned here in Jamaica and Western Jamaica rather, uh, to be specific and see how those can be you know, exported, if you will, or promoted across the region. Because as we have seen, and as a president of the Caribbean Water and Wastewater Association, we always see similarities amongst our Caribbean nation in terms of how we plan, how we use water, how we treat with sanitation, how we treat with our coastal uh, cities uh, and townships. And therefore, it is important that we explore those mitigating improved planning strategies that is going to ensure that our people, our visitors and businesses can operate in a very sustainable, having an enjoyable and clean environment in terms of how we do business, work, raise our families as we go in the 21st century. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my role is not going to be of one that is very verbose, but just to really congratulate the team on advancing this conference, especially in light of what has been happening in the last seven months uh, here in Jamaica and in the world, and where COVID-19 has disrupted everything. But I al always say to every disappointment, there are opportunities. And I think the planning committee have seen the opportunity to continue to move ahead, press ahead, because in light of COVID, we recognize that combining everything, there is even more reason why we should think sustainable uh, cities, more reason why we should think about sustainable approach to development, and even more reason why we should think about how do we ensure that our citizens have the comfort that they deserve in a sustainable way. I want to thank you very much. And wish you a very successful conference uh, in November. Thanks. Ooh. There's an urban model common to most Latin American cities. It started with a grid, typically set by a river, with a central area where people could congregate. This model was replicated again and again, and many cities grew and thrived. These cities were so successful that they attracted people from surrounding rural areas and even from other continents. Among them are grandparents and great-grandparents who were able to prosper at rates they could never have imagined. In these cities, economic activities diversified. People could find jobs as well as study 
invent, and replicate. Much of our city's success springs from that fact. Today, 198 of these cities generate more than 60% of the region's GDP. They are our economic engines. However, many of our cities have been victims of their own success, growing in an unplanned and disorderly manner, and the economic engine has started to break down. Today, many of our cities are in crisis. They're no longer growing like they used to. One in four people in Latin American cities live in slums. Less than 20% of the sewage is treated. Rivers that once fed cities have died. We're forced to bring water from increasingly distant locations. Social meeting places have become dangerous. We've turned into the world's most violent region with 20 homicides per 100,000 inhabitants a year, almost triple the world average. Our cities are responsible for 80% of our carbon dioxide emissions, and climate change is making them more vulnerable. Is it possible to replace this exhausted growth paradigm with a more equitable one? A model that honors our past as well as our future? We think it is. Let me explain. There are about 140 cities in Latin America and the Caribbean that we at the IDB call emerging. These cities are growing demographically and economically at rates above the national average. They face many of the same challenges mentioned earlier, but by working with them, we believe we can have a decisive impact on their development. I want to thank Mr. Caetano and Mr. Barnett from the IDB and the NWC respectively for showing how working together is of extreme value to addressing the issues of sustainability. So there is a lot of work to do and a lot of potential for partnerships among and across institutions. Uh, be they private, be they public, academic, or otherwise. This conference seeks to bring together all who have interests in technology, in planning, in climate action, in security, and of course in public health, so we can together chart new pathways where necessary and strengthen the sustainability agenda of our region, starting with our cities and the communities. We have with us online this morning one of our sponsor partners, the Development Bank of Jamaica, and I want to pose a question specifically to Mr. Ricardo Monroe, the manager of the Private-Public Partnership and Privatization Unit. That is a question that really speaks to the value of linkages between the various institutions involved in sustainability of our cities. And I hope Mr. Monroe is still with us because I, 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 I want to use this as an opportunity to just open up into our question and answer uh, section. So Mr. Monroe, in the context of developing a climate resilience framework for sustainability and sustainable infrastructure development, how can partnerships between institutions like the IDB and the Development Bank of Jamaica, uh, universities and so on, for example, be operationalized to advance the sustainable cities agenda? Thank you, Dr. Prendigas. Um, and thanks to the organizers for the opportunity um, to allow the Development Bank of Jamaica to be, be a part of this conference. I bring greetings on behalf of our managing director, and we are proud to be associated with this conference because it fits with our, our mission. We at the Development Bank see ourselves as an important bridge um, between the public and private sectors in Jamaica. And without that bridge, development won't happen or won't happen fast enough. And in line with the, the theme, um, the De Development Bank of Jamaica in 2019, in association with the Inter-American Development Bank, led an initiative to upgrade our internal capacity at the DBJ to deliver PPP, that's public-private partnership infrastructure, which are more resilient to climate change. Um, I invite the public and members um, here today to view the report called Improving Climate Resilience in Public-Private Partnerships in Jamaica. And this can be found at, on the IDBs or the DBJ's website. In doing this work, we found it to be 
a game changer. We found that it can be a lesson throughout the Caribbean, throughout the region, because we didn't find a body of work that is similar, that focuses on um, improving infrastructure, in particular public infrastructure, so that they can be more resilient to climate change and, and meet the, the challenges of the time. We are proud to, to, to play this role. It is our mission to do so. And I think, you know, everyone might say the same thing from IDB's perspective. Uh, Mark alluded earlier to our, our relationship, because like our relationship with NWC, the DBJ sits in the middle of a lot of activities that is going on in the public sector to improve our infrastructure. Um, I'm pleased to say that Montego Bay, you know, has a very important public-private partnership infrastructure that is there. That's the Sansa International Airport. And, you know, we can see that the private sector is actually meeting the challenges of the time because like Sansa, um, many other private investors that hold public infrastructure are improving those infrastructure um, to be more resilient, to be smarter. And, you know, we definitely think that this is the way to go. And we will bring as many partners to the table as possible to ensure that Jamaica meets um, its, its vision in this area. Thank you very much for that response. I, I, I know I kind of did put you on the spot, but you're always prepared. And one of my media persons told me that um, they, they, would, they would have been asking me that question. So I'm happy, <laughs> I'm happy that you were able to answer that, for, for that one for us. Uh, in that vein, I really want to, to thank all our partners um, that have come on board so far. And as a way of, you know, as I said before, opening up to the, to the media, I know we have uh, representatives from New Stock, More FM, we have uh, the Observer, the Gleaner, JIS, and the Western Mirror online. So, and, if, and there may be others, I'm just um, talking about those that I've recognized so far. There may be others. But just to say to our partners, uh, leading with the Inter-American Development Bank, the Development Bank of Jamaica, the Development Bank of Jamaica, the National Water Commission, the Hilton Rosal Resort and Spa, the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce, the St. James Municipal Corporation. Uh, these are our lead partners and we really want to thank them for you know, staying with us through this time and for encouraging us and supporting us on our journey to get this critical conference on its way. We also want to thank our conference participants and presenters from the Port Authority of Jamaica, the National Housing Trust, the University of Technology and the Faculty of Built uh, Environment, the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, the Housing Agency of Jamaica, St. Anne Municipal Corporation, the Planning Institute of Jamaica, Jamaica Institute of Planners, the Department of the University, the Department of Public Health at the University of, West in, of the West Indies, and of course the Faculty of Science and Technology, UIMONA. These are persons who we, we already have um, engaged and confirmed in terms of their participation, and we're looking forward to hearing from others as we move on. As we say, there's lots of excitement around this conference, and we really, really appreciate uh, the effort uh, being put into this. We really appreciate your, your, your support at this time. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, um, before we, we, we take the questions, I just want to, to recognize an important team working with me. You've met uh, a few already, well, a couple, uh, already, but I just want to mention the, the conference planning committee, and then we'll go over to the media for questions. First up, I want to mention uh, as a, 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 a rock, so to speak, behind the scenes, our conference consultant, Mrs. Geraldine Geddes. You've met uh, Mrs. Doreen Prendergast, and certainly from the administration side, Ms. Carla Edwards, and 
we want to, to, to mention Mr. Andre Hewitt, who is in digital media production, and Ms. Yannick Baker, uh, finance. We also have Mr. Trevion Manning, as we mentioned before, in planning. And there is Ms. Sandra Stubbs in publications and Mr. Anthony Drummond's in technology. And we, 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 we really feel very proud of the work that the team is doing. And certainly, um, we, we know that we are, we are excited about delivering an excellent product. So now I want to open up for about 10 minutes or so for questions um, to, to, to the media. The, the media person in, already in our space said that her question was answered by Mr. Monroe. So um, I'm going to ask you to just identify yourself and your media house and pose the question to any of the panelists, or I should say presenters. Christopher. Hi, yes, good morning. My name is Christopher Thomas from the Gleaner. I'm putting this question to Mr. Barnett from the NWC. Now, oh, sir, you spoke in your presentation about the concept of renewable water. You mentioned that kind of briefly. But what I want to understand, sir, um, we've, we've had rains recently, some very heavy rains, to the point that some water restrictions which were in sections of the island have been lifted, but still cert certain sections of rural, rural Jamaica, different communities, are still without water, proper access to water, including even last night, there was a report on the news that there's a rural community somewhere in Eastern Jamaica that said that um, is without water. And we know that co with COVID regulations right now, we need to constantly be washing our hands, keeping sanitized and such. But is it, is it a case then that person might come to the conclusion that we weren't taking this renewable water concept seriously before, or it wasn't being pushed before. How do we respond to this sort of situation? There, there, there are multiple ways, Christopher, to respond to that question. The question, the, the issue that you have to contend with, are people sufficiently accepting that rainwater is a water source other than it coming through the pipe? And I, what I've found in recent years is that when people exposed to greater urbanization practices, they no longer wish to use those source of water as their uh, primary source. Secondly, you need to, the, the next issue is, is there really a utilize a utility service um, infrastructure in the community. And invariably, if it's rural, deep rural, it, that may not exist. So when we talk about uh, water for and access for water communities, we cannot ignore in any way, shape, or form rain harvesting at the ho household level. It is something that needs to be promoted it is something that is in, enshrined in the current water sector policy. It is something that I know the municipal corporations are insisting with development. But again, a lot of these people would have already constructed and live in our community for years, which they may not have had those uh, infrastructure. So the question is, how do we develop a policy to ensure that those, can, those activities can be encouraged? Because I will tell you, while it is the intention to advance and expand the utility service coverage, it is not going to be economically or financially possible for all communities in Jamaica. And we just need to accept that reality because somebody who lives five miles away from a cluster of houses for that single person to get that uh, service, it, it's just not economical. But the point is taken and it's just a matter of what is their available infrastructure in those communities? And invariable, a lot of it is deficient. And again, it all depends on the, 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 the change in expectation that exists amongst our population. I hope I sufficiently respond to your, to your question.
we have time for another? We do have time for another. So is is there anyone else, um, Andre? Just identify yourself and go ahead and ask question. Yes? Sure. All right, so we have a question from, from location. So um, we're going to, to, to thank you too, Christopher. Thank you really, thank you very much. Go ahead, Onome. Okay, Onome Sida from Jamaica Observer. What is the estimated time for the development to be deemed as successful? Pa sorry? What is the estimated time for the development to be deemed as successful? No, I don't. I, I I don't know which of the the members of the team want to to take that question. It's 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 it speaks to issues again. We talk about sustainability and and measuring our success, but I think in in overall, I mean, there's always the the conversation between um, growth and and development. Uh, but the important thing is for us to recognize that when we have set specific targets in terms of what would make a city uh, or put a city on a, on, a, on a sustainability path, right, that it, it, it therefore would vary since we have different dynamics to, to, to deal with across the different cities. So, so, so again, you know, we talk about, for example, the one Bay for all plan that has been there for some time. There is there is always a discussion about what are, what about the other development plans that have been there. So if if when you design these plans and design these cities and design these communities and project them as sustainable or emerging cities towards sustainability, right? You're going to have to put timelines on that based on as I said before, those dynamics that you'd have to encounter. So there is no real, uh, um, what you'd say, time frame within which we can say the development is successful. Because the other side of it is that um, development is ongoing, right? It's a process of constant change. The important thing for us to recognize is that we, what we want to do is to move to a stage where we are not constantly behind or playing catch up, right? So what we have to do is, is broadly say what it is that we would, what would make Montego Bay uh, a smart city? What would make Montego Bay a city on the path to sustainability? What would make Kingston a smart city? What would make Bridgetown, wherever, in terms of you know, how we deal with the peoples, how we deal with the technology, how we deal with all of those um, elements that you know, we we'll have to consider in, in sustainable development. And I would like to add that, um, that, that cities are dynamic beings. Oh, sorry. I would like to add that cities are dynamic beings. So in developing any city, you will always have a sustainable trajectory that you are um, pursuing and different goals would have been set. But once those goals are, are, are achieved, New goals are set. So <laughs> because of the dynamic nature of cities, to say that a development is successful, it's a little difficult to confine to that sort of, 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 of definition. Cities are dynamic. So you set goals, you accomplish goals. What the aim is to ensure that people are, are not disenfranchised, that poverty is reduced, that the spaces are livable, you know, that sort of thing will help to make our cities better. And in different persons' judgment, they may see it as sufficient, others may see it as needing, that, that there is more to be done. So cities are very dynamic. It's hard to pinpoint and say, yes, Montego Bay is, 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 is successful because it has a one mobile plan or it has an airport or it or it has the it, it has beaches or it has major hotels. Cities are constantly changing and growing. And what is important is that the people who live in the cities are 
in livable spaces and can meet their needs, satisfy their needs, and there is social cohesion. Dr. Beckford, I think, is on the line, and he has a, a question as well. Yes, um, good, good morning, everyone. Morning, um, Dr. Prendergast. Um, so I want to first say thank you um, for the media launch and for inviting us all to come to the media launch. I, I'm really enjoying it. The, the a question I have is, at the end of the conference, will a publication be done? And also, um, for the since we're on to, how do we measure the success and so on? Um, what are some of the things you hope to come out at the conference that, it, um, that at the end you can say, we have had a successful conference? Thank you. Thank you so very much for that question, Dr. Beckford. Yes, we intend um, to, to do a publication coming out of the conference. Um, but I would not say it is specifically about coming out of the conference. As I said in our opening, the, the Caribbean Sustainable Cities Conference is really an upscaling of a series of symposia that we've had at this campus since 2016. So we ha we've had each year in October, we celebrate WJC Week, and, and a major part of that celebration is the, the Sustainable City Symposium. We've had uh, sessions on technology. Uh, we've had sessions on education and economy. We've had sessions on environmental uh, uh, planning and sustainability. And so over the years, we have been building up, let's say, a body of work that we can, we, we feel we are confident enough now, at, we are at the stage at which we can convert a lot of that into uh, meaningful publication. So that, uh, from an academic institution perspective, we really and truly want to continue to contribute to, to the body of work out there in terms of how we understand um, our, our Caribbean realities. Um, so so, so that's, that's a big, big one for us. We, we, are, we are not going to tell you that we have set any specific number in terms of participation as a success indicator, but what we really hope is that the, the outside of the publication that we will begin to see a much more engaged public uh, uh, discourse around these very, very critical issues of sustainability. We'll just leave it at that for, for, for now. Thank you very but much. I look, forward to your, I look forward to your participating as well, Dr. Beckford. Uh, thank you very much, sir, and I will endeavor to. Thank you. All right, so there, the, 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 the media, we're going to close off this broadcast, I would say, at this particular point. But before I do that, I am told that I really need to thank the audience, um, those that have been listening on More FM, which is our local uh, community radio station here in Montego Bay. And we really want to thank Mr. Patrick Williams and the team from More FM for carrying this for, for, for us. Um, I want to thank everybody from, the, from Newstalk, from The Gleaner, from JIS, from Jamaica Observer, from the Western Mirror. I want to thank all our media partners. Over the years, you have been really very, very good to us. And we appreciate the support that you continue to give to us. I want to thank all of our presenters this morning. Um, you know, we, we, we had a very good opening and overview from Mrs. Prendergast. We, we also heard from our main partners and sponsors, um, the IDB and the NWC through Mr. Evan Caetano and Mr. Mark Barnett. We want to thank Ms. Rowe from the Hilton. We want to thank Mr. Monroe from the Development Bank of Jamaica. And I want to, to express our appreciation to the Nexus Performing um, Ensemble for allowing us to share their performance uh, with you all. I want to thank Ms. Silvera from the, from the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and Industry and Mr. Gerald Lee 
uh, Chief Executive Officer of the uh, St. James Municipal Corporation. Uh, and of course, I want to thank the, the, the planning, the conference planning team for their continued support. I want to thank you all for engaging with us this morning. Uh, I, I know from the comments that have been coming in that it has been a, a very good uh, engagement and we look forward to seeing you November 4 to 6, 2020 at the Hilton Rose Hall Resort and Spa uh, when the University of the West Indies Mona Western Jamaica campus will host its first, its first Caribbean Sustainable Cities Conference under the theme Go Green, Go Safe, Go Smart. Uh, the GS2 conference team, thank you all for your participation and we encourage you, go register, book your accommodation, and let's get ready for a safe, responsible, fulfilling, enlightening and solution-oriented experience that we know will go a far way in advancing the development of sustainable cities across our Caribbean region. Thank you all for participating and do check out our website. I mentioned it at the top of this morning. It's wjcsustainablecities.org. It's very uh, user-friendly, it's very engaging and exciting, and of course, do keep in touch. And, and once again, special thanks to all of you in the media for your tremendous contribution to this process of engagement. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Okay.